what we don't understand perhaps is that the people in New York are totally traumatized by 9-11, obviously, and that uh, a building that looks even a little bit like it uh, would cause so much outrage. Hello, good evening. Thanks for having me. Uh, I say hello from the coolest city of the Netherlands. And uh, I'm partner at MVRDV, which is a globally operating uh, architecture firm. And I want to tell you an incredibly embarrassing story. Um, and uh, yeah, so at a certain moment, uh, we were invited to um, design two uh, buildings for this new master plan outside of Seoul in Korea. As you can see, it's a lot of big buildings. And strangely enough, this New York uh, planner had 16 uh, twin towers uh, planned in this uh, plan. And we were supposed to make uh, those, plan uh, those two buildings here, a tall one and a le less tall one. And as you can see, this plan is quite boring. So it's lots of needles. And what we wanted to do, we wanted to really make it different and uh, much better. We basically wanted to, uh, to add a, a bridge between those two buildings and not just a bridge, but a really massive bridge. So what we then do in architecture, we, uh, we start with the site, which is here. We put the two uh, uh, twin towers on top. We make them a bit smaller and then we have uh, space left. And with this space, we then uh, make a plinth. And a plinth in architecture is the place where you have uh, on the ground floor, you have the restaurants, the shopping center and so on. But we wanted to, uh, first of all, make it more human scale. So a bit uh, perhaps like a village. And then we wanted to lift it up uh, to the center of the tower so that you basically would have a wonderful view from up there. So you can be in those restaurants and see the surrounding and all the other towers. Then we make it all green. And uh, then, uh, yeah, that was basically the plan. The idea to have these two uh, towers connected, we then called the cloud. And here you see the cloud connecting the two towers. Now, the design of the cloud was something. It was 11 stories, which is quite a lot, an engineering marvel. You can't imagine how, how difficult it is, but also how cool it was that we actually uh, did it. So we made many different designs. And how do we uh, actually make this cloud work? And uh, here, for example, is one of the earlier designs where it looks almost like a racetrack or maybe a belt connecting the two buildings. But we didn't like that too much. So basically, <clears throat> in the end, uh, here you see the belt again. It's not so cool. You have only one outside space. What we really appreciate in buildings is if, if they have a more of a human scale. Even in such big buildings, we want to have the same effect like maybe an Italian mountain village. Lots of uh, uh, outside spaces, smaller spaces. And here you see how we then designed the cloud between those two buildings. You see trees and swimming pool and really cool spaces. And also the inside was in incredibly cool. We had this big uh, interior space uh, where you could see people almost like a market square, but of course uh, up there in the air, uh, hanging between two uh, buildings, a really fantastic plan. <clears throat> so we made images, for example, how you would uh, uh, see the sunset from up there or how you would experience this building uh, from the park next door. So this cloud between the two buildings. And also we made this, uh, this image um, and uh, how it was down there. And we just didn't see it. Um, actually, nobody saw it. Nobody saw what the problem was with this building. So we went to Seoul, we presented it. Everybody was super happy. And, uh, and then uh, we were able to send out a press release and uh, first it hit the um, Korean press and they liked it a lot. And then uh, it was published also in, uh, in Europe. So for example, in Germany, people called it art, they called it extra classe. And then when it finally hit uh, the United Kingdom, there was somebody who's, who wondered why it looked like 9-11. Then the New in New York, uh, it made uh, headlines and the Americans knew exactly that it looked like 9-11 and they called us sick and terrible. And it was an absolute drama of bad press, which then came back to Europe and people called us sick and terrible. So here you see how it starts very well. The, whoop, then the, there's the first bad uh, news uh, at a certain moment, they call us uh, sick and that we cause outrage. 
And people just couldn't believe that we would design a building worth to almost 2 billion euro uh, and that we didn't see this kind of uh, imagery. They also couldn't believe it because architects, of course, are uh, dealing with, um, with images all the time. So how was it possible that this architecture office uh, basically couldn't see it? So uh, that, was the, that was the big uh, problem. And uh, sorry, really, um, first started with really good press and then it turned into really bad press and there was a lot coming up uh, uh, towards us. No, it doesn't uh, switch. I'll try it again. Nah, doesn't work. Alexis, it is, would you like it to is take switching it on my. It does, hey, I can show. Sure. Okay. Yeah, what slide think... are you on right now? I'm seeing the black and white slide with the Fox News headlines. Which oh, you see the Fox News? Okay, that's cool. So basically, um, uh, at a certain <coughs> moment, uh, it it took a week. We didn't sleep in this week. We were uh, thinking we might never ever work again in America, and so we published an apology on our website. We couldn't apologize for designing a building that looked like 9-11 because we didn't do that. We designed a cloud. So instead, we uh, apologized for causing so much stress and uh, for evoking uh, this image in people's uh, yeah, expectation in a way. So um, that, that was an apology. And then uh, Fox News uh, saw our apology and they didn't buy it, of course. And they, uh, Fox Television at that day declared us the worst person of the day. And if you are declared the worst person of the day by Fox News, you are in a very prestigious list of very good people. Um, but we couldn't really enjoy it because we were so shocked by uh, what happened to us, this incredible shitstorm of bad uh, press. At the worst day, we had 80 uh, bad articles, but I think we also had like 120 neutral ones. And one of our American co-architects uh, basically said, you know, Jan, don't worry. There is no such thing as bad publicity. It will be all right. And I'm so proud to be on your team. So she actually uh, liked it a lot. Also, our clients in Korea, they were not fussed. They said, oh, wow, you made so much uh, free publicity. It's great. So they were quite happy. The, the people in Seoul were, of course, uh, uh, yeah, they were also not so fussed. They thought the Americans make a lot of uh, stress about something. But of course, we didn't. Uh, what we don't understand, perhaps, is that uh, the people in New York are totally traumatized by 9-11, obviously, and that uh, a building that looks even a little bit like it uh, would cause so much, so much outrage. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was quite, uh, quite something. But um, so after one week, everything was just suddenly over. It started very big. It ended uh, just like somebody switched off the light and it was over. We could get rid of our police protection because, you know, even in the Netherlands, we received uh, phone calls of people threatening us. Uh, so it was, it was quite weird how this, all this suddenly stopped. And then a few months later, so suddenly we were asked to design this penthouse uh, in a building where Mick Jagger's girlfriend lived, the one who, who didn't uh, <laughs> end up very well. But it shows that we were then asked to, uh, to basically have another project in America quite soon after this. And if you switch one more, there was actually a really bad, uh, no, a really good, happy ending because we, uh, we are now uh, building a really big building, mixed use building in, uh, in Manhattan uh, with a hotel and offices and shops. And it's very colorful and it's very beautiful. And it's just topped out and it will be finished uh, probably at the end of this year. So uh, basically what we learned from this uh, after we, uh, we, we de-stressed a little bit because that was one of the roughest weeks ever. Uh, basically we learned that uh, maybe it's good to not design in a bubble and also ask other people what they think of the design, whether they see something weird. And recently, um, we designed a building that looked a bit like the Death Star of Star Wars, and we decided to uh, change it uh, as of to not have another uh, big uh, media storm. And uh, so we, we became a bit more aware that, uh, uh, that our designs uh, uh, sometimes can evoke uh, strange things. But it was a happy ending, and in New York, we're working now. And uh, so um, in the end, it was a good learning curve. 
have you ever failed in a project, career, or business? Whether you have or not, you can become a Fuck Up Nights organizer in your city, company, or university. Learn how at fuckupnights.com. Join the movement. Fuck up the system.